Welcome back. Well, to many, it is the very symbol of Long Island, the Fire Island Lighthouse. It has lit the way for nearly 160 years, but now it's getting a bit of a facelift, at least at ground level anyway. An unusual sight at the base of the Fire Island Lighthouse, workers replacing the original terra-style stones that have been there since the lighthouse first shined its beacon in 1859. Back in, when Sandy went through, we had five foot of water washed through and undermined one of the corners of the base of the terrace, and it started to fall in and crack a little bit. The National Park Service is paying for the repairs to the popular lighthouse, which draws hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. Some marvel at the original lens on display that first lit up the lighthouse, but 30,000 people yearly are willing to take on the 182 spiral steps to make it to the top of the 168-foot tower. Once there, they can enjoy the panoramic views of the ocean and barrier island, and mariners still rely on its two continuously rotating 1,000-watt bulbs. That's able to shine a light over uh, 21 miles that ships can still see and they still use it even though there's GPS and radar. Managers say despite the eroding terrace the lighthouse is structurally sound and safe and that's reassuring to its many fans. I think it's important because this lighthouse is a big part of Long Island's history. The lighthouse has stood on the west side of Fire Island since before the Civil War to greet generations of newcomers. Most likely that was the first uh, light that immigrants saw coming in the 1850s when you are coming into New York City. And with us now is David Grease. He's the executive director for the Fire Island Lighthouse Preservation Society. And welcome to the show, David. Well, thanks for bringing me here. Yeah, you know, at one time, folks actually wanted to uh, shut this down not all that long ago. Yep, there was a, a time back in the 70s when it was almost going to be demolished by uh, because it was in such bad disrepair. And that's when people from Babylon and Bayshore got together and fundraised over $1.2 million to restore it and bring it back to life and keep the light shining. That's how you guys kind of came into the picture, right? Exactly. You yep. work with the parks. We are a cooperating association, partners with the National Park Service, Fire Island National Seashore, who help operate and maintain it. Yeah, I think there's been a, an appreciation of these lighthouses in the last couple of decades. At one time, people thought, oh, you know, they're obsolete, they're not needed. But, but they actually are still needed, no? They are, they are still needed as far as to people who don't have GPS or radar or those types of electronics that come in. But even they still like to see the light shining. I was impressed by how far out that light can go. 21 miles. 21. That's, uh, it's, uh, because it's so tall, it's 168 feet tall. And it's just a great icon and a great beacon. For and it can even penetrate now. the fog? Well, not that. Yeah, that could that be a little, tough, a little right. tough, right? But I was fascinated with the old lens, they call it, which is the, you know, the big bulb, right? But the way that was operated versus the one you have now. Tell us a little bit about that, exactly. how it evolved. Exactly. That's just a feat of engineering that was in the 1850s. It's called a first-order Fresnel lens. It's over 18 feet tall, and it was able to take an oil lamp illumination and cast it out over 21 miles also. Oil lamp illumination. <laughs> Oil lamp. It's all through prisms. It's all through right. physics and uh, a great piece of engineering, but great looking artwork. Too. Yeah, because when you go inside, the light itself is not that impressive, but then it's reflected through the prism of the, uh, of the lens so many more times. It's magnified, right? Right. Great physics uh, experiment to get the light that way. Now, the light that's in there now, what's, how is that different? How is that powered? Well, the beacon up on the top now is all electric. Uh, it's called an DCB-224, which uh, has two large drums, and there's a 1,000-watt bulb in both of them that are able to shine out and uh, go out 21 miles, like I you was, said. Yeah, I was surprised how many people were there the day. It was a weekday. It was in the morning, and they were still flooding in and out. Uh, oh, tell, how many people come there? Oh, it's a great icon. It's a fantastic. Uh, we're open year-round, and uh, we get over 160,000 people come out to the Fire Island Lighthouse. Uh, over 38,000 people climbed the tower, and in fact, we have over 6,000 school children come out for our program. Yeah, my daughter went one time. It's one of those things all the school kids look forward to doing. Yep. We cater to the fourth graders. That's part of the curriculum of New York State, and it's a great three-part program where they not only go up to the lighthouse, they see the lens, but they also are able to take part of a little life-saving drill that they take part of. You mean what, uh, with an AD or? No, it's with a, it's, 
kind of representing what they used to be able to rescue people off of ships oh. with a life-saving service and a, a drill that they used to use a breeches buoy where people would sit in a life preserver and be brought off the ship in that manner. Well, you also can get some pretty good exercise going up those <laughs> steps, right? I mean, that spiral stair. Is that the original? Original stairs, 182 steps up to the top. When you climb up to the top, you get a great view. And when you come down, you get a certificate that you climb to the top. <laughs> and you got to be in good shape. We should let people know. You shouldn't attempt this if you have any sort of heart exactly. problems or anything like that, right? Yeah, you do have to be healthy, and uh, you do have to be over 42 inches tall. Uh, and you do have to wear some shoes. Well, you know, here, the year round, you know, I mean, most people, they only think that something like that would be open when the weather is nice. So you're out there in snowstorms too sometimes? Well, we, we get out there. <laughs> it's, uh, it, you'd be surprised how many people want to come up. We get a great international visitors too. We have probably 5% of our visitors are international. I noticed that. You get uh, definitely there were many people from Europe the day I was there, and they're so impressed with it. Uh, the panoramic view, too, because you see the ocean and then you also see the, the you know, the Great Bay there. Great exactly. Bay. And you can even see New York City with the Empire State Building. Uh, it's uh, 50 miles away, and I've uh, even heard that from the Empire State Building, you can see the seven and a half flash uh, of the lighthouse back. Every few seven and a half seconds, it flashes? That's what it does now, yeah. That's uh, how you can tell it's the lighthouse. And think about the history of what's transpired. I mean, this was built before the Civil War. Exactly, and and just to think about how they built it uh, without cranes, without you know, all by hand, pretty much. Uh, and how did they do that? They just <laughs> took it one... They were able to take and use the center stairs as scaffolding, where they would put one stair down and swing it around 360 mm. degrees, build a layer of bricks, put the next stair down and build a layer of bricks and keep going all the way up 168 feet. And would they have a keeper of the lighthouse? Or do you still have one? How does that all work now? Exactly. They did have a, two keepers who lived there, and that's what is now the museum. It was their home. It's called the Keeper's Quarters. And uh, we have a small museum in there with uh, a gift shop and now restrooms and uh, displays. But, uh, again, the keeper lived there with his family all year long, and there were two of them. Is that... Still the case, or well, probably not anymore. Yeah, now, 1954. Right? Electric light. <laughs> 1954, they did uh, retire the last keeper, and uh, it's now automated. Well, it's a piece of Long Island history, piece of American history, if you really want to look at it. David Grease with the uh, Fire Island Lighthouse Preservation Society, where they continue to light the way for generations to come. A little bit of work going on, but you can see it anytime. Thank yes. you very much, David. Well, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely, and we'll be right back.